Section 1.3, Physical and Chemical Properties. Physical properties rely on the physical state that the compound that the matter is in. So when something changes physically, the type of substance does not change. The atoms or the molecules, they are still in the same composition. So for example, when we look at water, when something changes physically, the location in space or the energy of those atoms or molecules may change, but their chemical composition does not change. So for example, when ice melts, right? So when water goes from being a solid to being a liquid, water, it does not change chemically, simply it changes physically. The physical makeup of the matter changes, but molecularly at a chemical level, the atoms are not rearranged. The atoms are in the same position, just the molecules have been rearranged physically in space. With a chemical property, our chemical properties, they depend upon the arrangement of the atoms in space. They depend upon the chemical makeup of that matter. So when something changes chemically, the type of substance does change. The atoms are rearranged. Bonds are broken. Bonds are formed. So for example, when water is split into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas using electricity, this would be a chemical change because the atoms have been rearranged. So a few examples of physical changes and properties. So some physical change examples would be melting, boiling, filtering, mixing. These are all physical change examples. So nothing is happening here chemically. We are just changing the physical um, arrangement in space of our matter. So some physical properties examples would be color, density, hardness, melting point, boiling point. All of these things depend upon the physical makeup of the matter, not the chemical makeup of the matter. So a few changes in state of matter would be melting, would be boiling, or freezing, condensing, or if we go directly from a solid to a gas, this is called sublimation, and the reverse from a gas to a solid is called deposition. So these are physical changes because the chemical makeup of the matter is not changing, just the physical arrangement of the atoms or of, of the molecules. So a few examples of some chemical changes and properties. So again, with a chemical change, the type of substance changes. The atoms are rearranged. So some chemical change examples would be digestion, uh, combustion, oxidation. All of these things involve some sort of reaction where the atoms are being arranged. So for example, if you react copper with HNO3, which is nitric acid, you get copper nitrate and nitrogen dioxide. So it's a reaction that looks like this. This is a chemical change because the atoms are being rearranged. A few chemical properties examples would be flammability, acidity, corrosiveness. These things all depend on the chemical makeup of the matter. Here is a knowledge check question. Which is not a physical process? Is it A, boiling, B, freezing, C, filtering, or D, combustion? Okay, the correct answer is D, combustion. This is the only one of the four that is a chemical process. The other three are all physical processes. All right, now let's look at extensive versus intensive properties. Extensive properties, they depend on the amount of matter present. So example would be mass, volume, length, and heat. All four of these depend on the amount of matter present. So for example, with mass, the more of something I have, the greater the mass is. So this is an extensive property. An intensive property does not depend on the amount of matter present. So for example, a uh, density is an intensive property, right? If I, let's say I had a little metal cube made of aluminum versus if I had a giant metal cube made of aluminum, the density is the same because they are both made of aluminum. It doesn't matter how much matter is present. All that matters there is well, what it's made of. So density is an intensive property or something like humidity is an intensive property. It does not depend, depend on the amount of matter present. Another good example is temperature. So I wanna compare the difference between heat and temperature. So heat, we're gonna learn about this more later in the semester, but heat is really a form of energy. So I want you to think about, let's say I had a small teacup with boiling water in it versus if I had a large 
pot with boiling water in it. The temperature in both of uh, both of those samples of water, the teacup and the pot, the temperature of both of them is 100 degrees Celsius. So temperature is an intensive property. It does not depend on the amount of matter present. However, heat is an extensive property, right? How much heat would it take to heat up a little teacup of water versus how much heat would it require to heat up a giant pot of water, right? It would take a lot more heat to heat up that giant pot of water because there's more matter present. So heat is an extensive property, whereas temperature is an intensive property. All right. Knowledge check question, which of the following is not an extensive property? A, mass, B, density, C, volume, or D, length? The correct answer is B, density. The other three are all extensive properties, whereas density is an intensive property. All right, that is the end of section 1.3. I'll see you in the next video for section 1.4, measurements.